with it clear and visible. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to sit at thy feet and hear from you as your servant stands before us. We join our faith to pray. May he be a vessel in your hands. Lord, use him. You have used him before, but today we pray for a fresh anointing and a special one for every one of us that we may hear and receive of you, even as you deliver what you have brought for us. Be honored, be glorified. As you bless us, may you bless him mightly to the honor and glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's appreciate Reverend as he sits. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. Um, allow, allow me to ask us to be on our feet if you don't mind. Um, blessed assurance you can just project blessed assurance today we start with the chorus and Spence you stick to my key <laughs> the one you practice forget about stick to my key this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the one more time this is my story this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story my song praising my savior praising my savior Blessed assurance, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, oh, the fortress, glory divine, heir of salvation, we are the patches of God, we are born of his spirit, Born of his we are washed of his blood. Wash in the blessed assurance one more time. Blessed assurance. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. Patches of God, born of His Spirit. This is my story. This is my story. Say it like you mean it. Oh, raising my Savior. Oh. song praising my savior all the day long father we bless you we thank you we praise your name in this month father we have seen your power we've seen your hand we've seen your presence and yet lord you are not done with us yet Again, you've gathered us here, Jehovah God, and you've blessed us so far. May praise, may glory, may honor be to you. Thank you, my Father, even as you speak to us this morning. We say that indeed we are blessed. 
Thank you for the assurance that you have given us. Thank you for the hope that you have, you have given us in you, Jesus. We sit under thy feet, Lord, speak to us. That you be honored. That you be built, that you be taught, that you be admonished to the glory of your name. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It looks like it's a prayerful Sunday. Hallelujah. It looks like it is a prayerful Sunday. Prayer then full, full. In your image, prayerful Sunday. I'm saying so because when Jeremiah was leading us with the praise and worship team after every song we would pray. Hallelujah. Then I thought that now we are, we were done with the prayer. Then Mr. Zengo came and again we prayed. Hallelujah. And so we have been praying since. And I feel we need to pray more than we just go. Hallelujah. Sunday I said that Nsimba blessed me with the bass guitar. If you remember. There's how it was dun 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 dun. There's a way there's a way he was touching it. Today, goodness me. Ah, today they have again if I say this, if I say blessed me, it's like they have not blessed me now, but today they have touched the inner bit of the blessing in me. <laughs> and I don't know about you guys, but when I look at what the Lord is doing with this team, that today it is Spencer on the bass guitar and someone else was on the keys, I think it was George. Sometime here we we relied on Mr. Humphreys alone on the keys. And when him and Maosa were not around, we were wondering what do we do with our lives. It's true. When Sam Arosi, Maosa was not around and perhaps perchance Mr. Humphreys was not here, we would wonder now, we go back to our villages and see how we could clap to the Lord. Another miracle that maybe you have not thanked God for is this carpet I'm stepping on. I have no idea who brought it here. Actually, the day I asked, I was told someone brought it. They refused to tell me the name of the person. We bless the Lord for that particular person. Hallelujah. The other Sunday, I was catching up with one of the members of the reception team concerning this canvas that you're seeing at the back here. And then I realized how difficult it is to raise this thing. This thing, how difficult it is. And yet someone comes in the morning they leave their house purposefully to make sure that it is here. It is wonderful. Hallelujah. And then I go for some meetings and when I invited to sit, I wipe my I wipe my hands on the seat. Then I check if it is then I come and I wipe here and I see it is clean. Someone woke up in the morning purposefully to make sure that that seat when you wipe, when you swipe, it is clean. And you're not offended because it is dusty. You know there are people who can come to church and swipe. Then they find it is dirty. Then the Sunday is done. The Sunday is now. Is, you, yes, it, the Sunday is ruined. Just by swiping and realizing. They can even say, how come they didn't clean it clean enough? Someone woke up in the morning to do that. Hallelujah. Again, I said it's a prayerful Sunday. Please be on your feet. I want us to thank God for the workers. Everyone who comes to work and do something in this house of the Lord, be on your feet and thank God for them. We, in whichever, mention them, whether they are the ones who raise this, the, the carpet, the people who come to mop, the people who just mention them, the prayers and worship, the prayer, uh, 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 anyone that, that comes to mind, pray and mention them before the Lord for a blessing. Also pray that the Lord will protect and preserve every worker in his vineyard. Because we know that the vineyard, there are few workers in the vineyard. We pray that the Lord preserves them that have given their hearts out to serve. Them that have availed themselves to serve in the house of the Lord. Father, we pray that may you watch over these that have 
chosen my father to set aside time for the purposes of work in the house of the Lord. I pray, my God, that you shall keep your watch over them, that you shall safeguard them, that, Father, you shall dictate their steps. My Lord, how I pray that your favor shall be their second name. How I pray, Jehovah God, that your light shall shine upon their feet, that you shall open doors before them, that your sustenance shall be their portion, that you shall hold them firmly, my Father, under your shelter, under your wing, under your shadow, under your care, to the glory and to the honor of your name. We pray, my Father, for your anointing to abound upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord, and we honor you. Then I want you to pray for yourself that is still struggling with where or how to serve. I know Elazengo mentioned it here. Pray for yourself. You who is struggling and do not know where to serve or how to serve or how to start to serve, use your own words and speak to the Lord concerning this matter. Father, we thank you. Just speak you. Remember, we are called to be servants in the house of the Lord. You are yet to find a place to serve. Pray that the Lord gives you a revelation, either through prayer or through a friend or through a brother or through a pastor or whosoever they are, and they whisper something to you as far as where you ought to, to serve is concerned. For that is what we are called to do in the house of the Lord. I pray for a conviction, Lord, upon our hearts. I pray for a revelation upon our hearts, Lord, that we shall know that we are called in your house to be servants. My Father, us who are still wondering where to serve, as we are still doubting where and how we can serve. My Father, I, how I pray this morning that may you make it clear to us, Jehovah God, that you have called us in your house, my Father, in your vineyard, to do something, my God. How I pray that this revelation be brought upon our understanding, in which Whichever way that you see fit, my God, be it a dream, be it a friend, be it a brother speaking to us, be it a personal conviction, Father, whichever way you can bring this to our attention, how I pray, that may you do it to the glory and to the honor of your name. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much for obliging my request. You can We can have our seats. Hallelujah. the the week the week that was the week for evangelism mission work where we would meet and mr jairus um or elvin would organize us here and then they, they would disperse us the last friday of that week i happened to have attended uh that mission activity and i came late Hallelujah. The, what is the opposite of hallelujah? So that I use that one. There's none. So let's stick to hallelujah. So I came late. <coughs> I came when they had dispersed from the meeting point up uh, outside here. So I assigned myself a location where to go. So I came and I passed and I go to this garden here. Hallelujah. Then I saw a gentleman and I felt that this is a gentleman that the Lord wants me to speak with and to share with the good news. So I went to the gentleman, he was sitting in one, on one of the benches. <coughs> and I asked him, good evening, sir. He said, good evening. I asked him, how are you? He said, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, then I asked him, would you spare one or two minutes uh, for me? One or two. You see, you ask one or two, but you know, there might always be <laughs> 10 or 15. <clears throat> he blatantly still told me no actually asked me as you can see i'm busy he was on his laptop yeah i said yeah you're right i yeah yeah i've, I've seen it i'm sorry now i left then I, I i was wondering if i should continue that way or come this side so i left him and i just proceeded then ahead of me there was another lady seated on a bench <clears throat> then i went and sat there on that bench then i didn't talk this time i didn't talk <laughs> i just kept quiet there we were not talking to each other <laughs> she wasn't on her fo she wasn't doing anything she was just seated um then i sat there for two minutes then i asked i asked her how are you she didn't answer she cried i just asked her how are you she cried 
So again, I felt awkward. So I, I allowed her to cry for, for, for some minutes. Sobbing, you know, sobbing. Eh? Then after sobbing, she sobered up. That sounds like a rhyme. People who know music and poem like Rachel would relate. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that lady gave me gave me around 45 minutes of her time. Then when we were finishing that session, she told me, I believe it is not a coincidence that you came and sat here. Then I told her, I believe so because I've understood in life for us believers, there are no coincidences. When Brother Zengu was saying there's no coincidence that there's a guest or a visitor who has come here, believe you me, even you being here, there's no coincidence. That lady received the Lord, uh, got born again and received the Holy Spirit. I don't know if she's here. She had promised to come. She's a fourth year student, if, if I remember well. I've forgotten her name. Faith. She was called Faith. Yes, Faith. There's no coincidence. Hallelujah. So you being here today, at around two minutes to twelve, and you both, all of us know that I will not preach within two minutes. So it is eleven fifty, so we will not do two minutes sermon. But you being here now, it is no coincidence, ladies and gentlemen. You shall live by faith. Hallelujah. That is the sermon or the title of the sermon today. You shall live by faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> I remembered something when I was leaving the house this morning. One of us said, I will not mention who, we were five of us, so one of us said, if I don't take tea, that church, I will not, I will not manage. <laughs> I think she was not living by faith, but... <laughs> Sorry, I've said she, so that is either Talia, Grace, or Susan. So one of one of them, um, Sister Jan, I, oh, and Nahal, yes, Nahal was also there. So one of those. <clears throat> you shall live by faith. And we will be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. And also Romans chapter 1, verse 17, and many other scriptures, or several other scriptures. Evident allegiance to God. <clears throat> I was reflecting on this theme that the Lord gave us this year, and the events that have taken place in this nation and just like the previous year again it became more clear to me why the Lord wanted us to have this as the theme of the year I have sat on the edge some of you know if not all that I'm very outspoken I speak my mind as it is those who have encountered encountered with me I've sat on the edge where I almost broke out in outbursts when I see how the nation or the direction the nation is taking and many of those times <clears throat> I have been personally called to reflect on this evident allegiance to God where I do not find myself behaving like the rest and I have to make a conscious decision daily not to behave like the rest Elvin here knows my mind about certain things. You see, she's laughing. I discussed with her a lot um, on these matters. If not for evident allegiance to God, Elvin, believe you me, I could have done terrible things. Hallelujah. But every day I am called to this then I understand that there's a way, even if I'm to take actions, there is a particular way in which I, as a believer, will take certain actions, not like the rest. Hallelujah. Then I realize that at the center of allegiance or loyalty, it is faith. 
at the very center of allegiance is faith. That faith is what holds together loyalty as a foundation. It is faith that then propels us to have allegiance to a particular person, in this case, to God. That if there was no faith, then really, there is no need for loyalty. And so, faith becomes one of the center pillars of allegiance. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, the Bible says, For we live by faith, not sight. Hallelujah. I'm saying, if I was to live by sight, reverend, and the things that I see happen to this in this country, if I was to live by sight, I would be a terrible human being. Hallelujah. If not for faith, if perchance I was to put aside faith as done, I'm, I mean, I don't know about you, I'm talking about myself. If I was to forget a little bit about faith, some of the actions I could have taken as an individual who is a member of this country, based on sight, would be very destructive. Hallelujah. So then I've come to realize that the real enemy of faith is what? Sight. One of the greatest enemies of faith, and we're going to understand what faith is in a few minutes, is sight. There are certain actions in your life, if you are to take them based on, not, not actions, decisions. If you are to take them based on sight, sight is flesh and feelings. If you are to lose faith and make decisions, a few of those decisions, based on sight, what you can see and what you can feel, believe you me, you could have landed or you would land in greater destruction. Or in a worse place than where you are. Hallelujah. How shall we live by faith and not sight? It is, it is so difficult to live by faith and not sight. Meaning, it is so tempting to live by sight and not faith because before you got born again the manner of living you are used to is living by sight hallelujah where you would make your decision based decisions made based on your feelings on your past experiences or your encounters and not faith Experiences include culture and tradition. There are people who have made decisions and choices as far as life is concerned, informed by their traditions and cultures. That is sight. The world has shaped us over time to have very clear eye view or sight. And so knowledge has become, knowledge is on our fingertips. Praise the Lord. It is almost unintelligent or foolish to stand up and say, brethren, you know me, I live my life by faith in this generation. It's almost foolish. It is awkward. It is backward. It is, which other word can I use? 
It is it is bar barbaric. Hey. <laughs> that one is big. But it is barbaric. It is absurd to say that I am living by faith. It is like you are not serious with life. No. If I stood and told you the life I am living now as far as provision is concerned as far as my as far as my health is concerned as far as my marriage is concerned as far as my kids are concerned i live it by faith as far as my career is concerned then you stand out as a fool amongst the intellect intellectuals it is so appealing to say that i am, I am so intellectually capable that I see things from a distance by sight. I can perceive things and make decisions based on proofs and reality. It is so appealing to do that compared to I live by faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it is, I realize that it is not just in our time that this is foolish or not appealing living by faith there is a story i was reflecting on i think I've, we have heard it over time there is a gentleman who is a fisherman this fisherman finds himself in a boat and in that boat he is not alone he is with others And I want to say these others were almost as intellectually capable as him. How they were saying things. Now, this gentleman is Peter. I want to use this story of Peter a little bit. So Peter finds himself in a boat with the disciples. Their master, who is the author of faith, was left on the mountainside that is Christ Jesus and he had stepped just a little bit for a while to pray it was in the morning the master comes early in the morning and since the boat was far away the Lord in his power walks on water And they see him coming, walking on water. Hallelujah. And then they start saying, looks like a ghost. That one there looks like a ghost. They, not they slender. Anyway, they, they mama amongst themselves. And they say, that looks like a ghost. But as he moves clearly closer to them, they realize that it is the Lord. Then Peter in his courage and has lost his sense of intellectuality stands and tells the master, master, tell me to come over. He's lost his intellectuality, now he's behaving like a fool. In that moment the Lord tells him, come. Hallelujah. Peter arises from the boat and steps on water remember he has put aside his intellectuality and science proofs and theories aside he's now acting foolishly in quotes hallelujah then peter steps on water and the water feels like a hard surface and he moves a few steps. Then he realizes that, no, 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 I'm a fisherman. It is not possible to, I've been on these waters many times. It is not possible to walk on this thing. What is wrong with, actually, I, 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 I can imagine him telling himself, what is wrong with me? Why have I lost it? You know how you say, I've lost it. 
And I want to believe that even the disciples, the friends of Peter that were with him in the boat were wondering, what is wrong with this fella? Why, why is he behaving foolishly? Why does he want to drown? That is, I can imagine that is what is happening to the disciples. In a moment, Peter realized that he's intellectually upright and he's a fisherman who has been on water for many years. His experiences kick in. What he has seen kicks in. Then he realizes, no, 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 no. It's, what am I doing? It's not possible for me to walk on water. Then before long, he now sees the storm. The waves. Hallelujah. And then Peter loses faith. When he loses faith, he shifts to intellectuality and reason. And proof. I'm not saying having faith is lack of reason. We'll come to that. So that again, it's not said here that we're a bunch of foolish people. Yet we have engineers and programmers like us here and Professor Minor. Before we talk to Dr. of Kiswahili, who is Dr. Wanyama? So don't get, don't get it wrong. I'm not saying that now we are a bunch of foolish people here. No, we are not. Some of us are some of the most learned people. Some of us, please. Some of us. I hold proudly my undergraduate degree. Proudly. <clears throat> but the moment Peter shifts and goes to intellectuality and experience and tradition, what he's used to, then he starts sinking. Hallelujah. At some point, Jesus calls, tells his disciples, O ye of little faith. Hallelujah. I've talked a lot about what is, what is faith. Again, this verse is, is normal. We know it. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. If we are to live by faith, we are called upon living a life in such a way that it is the opposite of what the world has taught us. What has the world taught us? The world has taught us that, that seeing is believing. I believe there's a company that has that as a slogan. Seeing is believing. That unless and until you see, do not believe. And we have taken that as a mantra of our lives. As here. Brethren, I'm speaking to believers. People who believe in Jesus. We have so much been fashioned in that manner. Such that if we don't see. Then we don't believe. Hallelujah. If we do not see proof then we don't believe. Hallelujah. If we cannot touch, we can't believe. Such that we have a paradox. We have a group of believers from the word believe, which is faith, who are living by sight, which is proof. I don't know if you are getting me. It is, you are a believer because you have faith. Meaning because you have believed. Yet in our daily lives, how we live? We live by sight, which is what we can see. Hallelujah. Which is no different from how non-believers live. Because non-believers live by sight. As a matter of fact, the miracles that the Lord Jesus was performing were meant for who? Non-believers. Hallelujah. 
Miracles were meant for unbelievers. Why? Because they wanted to see. Then they believe. At some point, Jesus refused to perform them miracles. Hallelujah. Somewhere in his hometown. Then as long as we are making decisions and choices that are based on sight, on what we can see, on what we can touch, on what we can intellectually perceive, on what we have proofs about, then we will continue to make carnal decisions and choices and not divine and spiritual decisions. That eventually you realize that over time the decisions and choices you have made are carnal and fleshly. Not freshly, Mwamburi. Fleshly. I know some of you don't know Mwamburi. You know Mwamburi. Don't worry, what is important is that you know the Lord Jesus. Even Mwamburi needed him or needs him. I don't know if he's still alive. He is. He is. Oh, so you know him. <laughs> if we continue making decisions and living our lives by and with sight, then we endeavor to make decisions that are carnal and fleshly. Decisions that cooperate. Decisions that align with the fashion and the pattern of this world over time and so over time you have a group of believers that have continually made choices and decisions that are based on sight to the extent that the difference between them who believe and the non-believers is not there apart from waking up in the morning to go to church and shouting praise the lord hallelujah there's a guy I was enjoying watching with the Kina James Oguta. I showed them somewhere in Kisumu. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's called Brian, Brian, Brain Jota. Because the way he, he makes, he pronounces that phrase. If you continue to make decisions, I want to repeat it, that are based on sight because sight is flesh. Hallelujah. There's a phrase that was spoken to us before we got married. And now that I am married, I can see. And I confirmed. That a wise woman or a wise man is a man who or a woman who chooses to get married to their spouses. Not because of what they can currently see. But because of what, because of what they can perceive in the spirit. As far as that spouse is concerned. What their spiritual eyes can see. And I've said it here before. If Sylvia Ogutu was to marry James based on sight. The James I knew. Based on sight. No, no, don't. This is serious. Don't laugh. Or even Esther. Those who guys who knew Joel. Esther. If Esther was to marry Joel based on no, actually that marriage would not take place because it, it could have been based on sight. So she couldn't have thought of marrying either of these fellas. <laughs> ah, now he is engineer Ogutu. Let me just say it. Guys, don't walk by sight. <laughs> My brother Ogutu would wear a t-shirt. <laughs> and us, we wouldn't talk, but we'd see, we thought it was a blouse. It is long. <laughs> it, is, it is a long t-shirt. And the guy does not care. <laughs> if Sylvia was to base her decisions back then on marriage, based on sight, But don't you know Joel with these big coats? <laughs> Very huge coats. 
if if Esther was to look at Joel based on sight at that time or even me <laughs> Reverend told me he bumped on my photo some photo some <laughs> And it was difficult for him to reconcile. <laughs> that person he saw on that photo and who I am today. If we, if we as believers were to constantly make decisions and choices based on sight, it would be doom. Faith is the confidence in what we hope for. An assurance about what we do not see. You don't see. Hallelujah. So living by faith basically means that every day as long as it is called today, we make the decision and say in our hearts, not my will, but your will be done. That is living by faith. Hallelujah. Guys, just like you, I'm also thinking that statement is easy on paper, but difficult on reality. <laughs> Let me tell you how difficult it is on reality. This statement here is made by none other than the Lord Jesus himself. Hallelujah. Who is fully God and fully man. The Lord takes some time and goes to the mountainside, Mount Olive, in a special garden called Gethsemane. And his time is drawing nigh, the time of his death. Hallelujah. Luke 22 verse 42. And as God, Jesus knows the will of the Father has to be done. But as man, he has a desire and a will that he would want to see come true. That is how we live, right? Where you know that there is something, there is how you want things to go. But again, since you have exposed yourself to scripture, you know the will of God. And so you're wondering, is it my will or God's will? Hallelujah. In Luke 22, verse 42. I want us to read. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Yes, remove that. Give me a simpler version. Then thy, thou thy, remove it. Jesus is making a conscious decision as far as his God, his will, which I barely say here is sight what the reality dictates sight is what you experience and reality dictates the reality dictates that you abuse someone the reality dictates that you punch someone the reality dictates that i have some young people who, what anguka nayo meant and they told me pastor talk up Some of this, not, nowadays the most, most songs that are played that are secular by these young people are very abusive. It's a bunch, a collection of abuses. I've, I've come to, I listen, kwa matatu metro, kama sijabe by earphones, I, kuna mutu wanasema, I don't know if I'll get the phrase correct. Nione, nione ni alafu ni niache inipite. Nione yu kitu alafu niache inipite. 
like George, you are really, reality says if you see a lady pass with them, Peter Nayo, Oma Anguka Nayo. That is the reality. The reality is that if you see a man that is wealthy, attach yourself to them. The reality in the office that is that lies makes life easy. So you want to be, you are predisposed to lie because you are reality dictates and makes it easy to live by sight. Hallelujah. Some years back as a believer, I would make decisions based on sight. And some, if not all of you know how they ended, some of those decisions. Mm -hmm. You know the story of the beautiful girl I saw on sight told me this one you should not leave. Dan, you are a fool. If you leave this one, you are a fool. Not Grace, another one. Many years before I knew Grace. It never ended well. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. In some matter to stage somewhere in Kencom. Sight. Hallelujah. It is sight that will tell you that if you don't do this thing now, you die. Sight, not faith. Sight, I said, is flesh. It is sight that will tell you if you don't watch it, you die. Actually, we'll bury you tomorrow. And then the radios will announce that he died because he didn't, do porno he didn't watch pornography. Something is telling you that is what your sight is telling you that is what will happen. You will die. Sight. Hallelujah. Living by faith means telling yourself daily, not my will, but your will be done. But having known this statement, that is, this is what living by faith means. The question then that arises is, do we know God's will? It is one thing to comfort ourselves and say that moving forward we'll be telling ourselves, not my will, but thy will. But the question that arises quickly is, do we know God's will? What is God's will concerning A, B, C, D? The nitty gritties of your life is concerned. I can comfortably say here, if we were to do a survey, inside here and even outside, and ask and list down A, B, C, D to Z, that we start saying what our what we believe God's will for us is as far as A is concerned, B is concerned, those papers might come back blank. Hallelujah. Because we are a group of believers who have no idea what God's will is. In the nitty gritties of your life, we are a group of believers who don't know what the promises of God are as far as A, B, C, D of our lives are concerned. And so if we don't know that will, then how can we now say that not my will, but your will? You don't even know that will. We, we don't know that will. Yet he has made it so clear in the scriptures. Yes, yet he has availed to us the Holy Spirit. Yet he has availed to us the gift of fellowship. Yet we still do not know that will. If you don't know what God's will as far as your marriage is concerned, believe you me, you will not make this statement. Let your will be done. Not mine, but yours. <laughs> you will not make it. You will rush and make your decision based on your will. Because it is only your will that you know. Hallelujah. Concerning everything, if you don't know God's will concerning your career life, your marriage life, whatever, mention it. You will stick to making your own will and your will prevailing. 
because that is the only will that you know hallelujah in one of my meetings with the gentlemen and women that we are doing marriage with we don't do marriage alone we do marriage as a group of people us i don't know about the others marriage is not an island we do marriage together with some other guys last sunday when we were taking a cup of tea well i ate sausage i think the rest took tea no, it's because I had tea in my car. I had taken some tea. So I just wanted escort. Sarah and Zengo was there. That's why she's laughing. One of us asked, what is this hardness of heart? Why? Because Moses said, Jesus, or rather Jesus said, in the beginning it was not so as far as divorce is concerned. But because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses then permitted you. So the question that was supposed to ask is, what is the what is hardness of heart? I want to cut this sermon. This sermon is very long. I'm going to cut it for the sake of open air. And people talked and we shared what this heart. Then I said as a sanguine that I am. I said this hard hearted oh good you can remember this hard heartedness I believe at that point was when someone's heart is called to repent and also called to forgive I said that is hard heartedness at that time Today in the morning, I, I was thinking about the same statement as far as faith is concerned. Then I realized that the greatest, one of another great, great enemy of faith is hard, hard heartedness. That hard, hard heartedness is when a believer cannot see things by faith, but sight. When you come to a point when you constantly see things by sight and not faith, then don't wait for another hard heartedness. Your heart is growing hard. Hallelujah. And I was reflecting, I was wondering if there is a reason to divorce, we all know here. That Jesus says, except for unfaithfulness. Then I realize again that except is because there is a high temptation that if someone has been unfaithful to you, then you will highly treat them by sight, based on the feelings and the reality of what they did to you. And then you will never see things by faith. And so that will proceed and bring divorce. But blessed are marriages which are rare. That even in the instance of unfaithfulness, they will still choose to see things by faith. Because at that time, if you see things by sight, it is impossible to have that marriage work again. If you see things by sight, if your heart continues to be hard, which is lack of faith, then that marriage is a done deal is true and if you come to pastors they'll say yeah we understand yeah whatever he did I or she did okay yeah you can you can divorce but do you know that we are so slow to talk about divorce would rather tell them reverend you can separate but not divorce i hope you know the difference because you don't know at what point the Holy Spirit will break your heart that is hard so that you reconcile even in unfaithfulness because when unfaithfulness happens you are living by sight you can't see faith you can't see beyond what your experiences and your feelings are but if you separate if you can't stay together then you separate then our prayer as pastors and as brethren will be God work on their hearts. That then at some point they will stop seeing by sight. 
and when they see by faith they might reconsider their marriage hallelujah husbands do not divorce your wives the lord knows that at the time that happens you are a point where you can't see by faith meaning there is room that sight will be taken away and faith comes in and you reconcile let me finish no i'm not finishing let me cut this sermon short you still have pages but let's cut it short we still have tomorrow I've said the first steps towards living by faith is unpacking and knowing God's promises for you. That is God's will. Unpacking and knowing God's promises for you. But even before you unpack those promises, you want to ask yourself, who is this God that I have believed? Hallelujah. Who is this God that I have believed? To live by faith, there are certain things about God that you must accept. They must settle in your heart. Whether you are young, old, middle age, it does not matter. There are certain things about God that must, must settle. You make peace with these things. Not just mentally, but your entire being. And this is the thing. You want to make these things settle in your heart, in your whole being. One is that I know God is good. Now, this mantra here is to help you daily to live by faith. Some of the reasons why we live by sight is because at some point we don't believe God is good. God has just allowed, as people would say, your entire family to be wiped off by an accident. I remember a gentleman in the media, quite famous, whose wife had a child. I don't know if she miscarried or the child died after birth, right after birth. That young lady publicly, in, his, in her bitterness, denounced the Lord. It became quite an item in the media some years back. I will not mention his name. In the point of her bitterness, she felt there's no way God is good. You've had those questions where someone say, if God is good, why did he? If you want to live daily irrespective of happiness or difficult times, then you have to settle it in your heart that God is no matter what. God, even if you don't understand. But have you not come across the story of Job? Even the wife provoking him to speak certain things about God. In his heart, he believed. It is settled. God is good. No matter what he does with my life. To the point that there's some fellas that would say, it's a scripture. I can't tell it in English. Japo haribika mwili huu tutapata mwingine kwa baba meaning that if in this reality of life things become so terrible that our skills will fall off from the bone we will still hold to the fact that God is good because even in our death he will give us new bodies So you must first understand, accept, and let it settle that God is good. Number two, you must accept and let it settle that God loves you. Period. That God loves me, no matter what. Then you must also settle in your heart and accept that God is faithful. Is it in your sickness? Is it in your troubled marriage? 
Is it in your studies? Is it in your business? Kanjo just visit reverend, assuming they swept everything and they brought court cases on him and what? KRA, what? Even in that situation, if they come and take everything, you still want to believe that the only person that is left for you that is faithful is God. Hallelujah. Then you must also accept and settle that God is full of miracles. That in no point or time, in no time he can ch change your situation. Hallelujah. You must also accept and finally understand that God's, God has got plans. And his plans are best for you. Even if it does not look like it. Hallelujah. One of the things I shared with that young lady, she reminded me of some years how many years are those now? Some years back. Her situation reminded me of my own situation. And she couldn't believe that I gave her a short story of my life. A bit of it. She couldn't believe that I was the same person who was seated with her there. She couldn't. Hallelujah. God is full of miracles and has got good plans for you. If these things don't settle in your heart, you will find it difficult to say, not my will, but your will be done. Hallelujah. Do you know why we have young men and women who would keep on onja onja? Actually, the, the world has given us a phrase that you test several frogs before you kiss the queen. You test frogs, frogs, frogs. Actually, it's almost normal that you test a frog, a frog, a frog, then queen. As far as marriage is concerned, now, that is living by sight. But if you believe that God has got the best plan for you as far as marriage is concerned, why are you kissing frogs? What is your problem? You won't kiss frogs. Hallelujah. I'm talking to someone who kissed a frog and almost died. So please, don't kiss a frog. It is not in God's will that you kiss frogs. Hallelujah. I want to finish. Let's be on our feet now. These things that I have read out here, you might not be feeling them right now in your situation. This statement that let your will be done but not mine. Do you know the time I was with that girl down out there? She couldn't she couldn't gather, gather courage to share what she was going through. Akianza too heavy analia. She would start, she cries. So I told her, no, it's okay. I told her one day we'll meet somewhere. And I was saying in IDC. And now you'll have the courage to share what was troubling you then. Maybe whatever is troubling you right now, there are things, the decisions you ought to make now. Oh, your situation now. The, you say, Dan, you don't know. You, you just don't understand. I want, uh, I want you and I, by faith, to choose to believe that God is good, that God loves me, that God is faithful, that God is full of miracles that God has got the best plans for me. Hallelujah. Irrespective of what you are going through. I call upon us to trust in God's love and unending faithfulness and his ability to perform miracles without having to see. We are choosing today to believe without seeing. Hallelujah. We are choosing to believe that we are healed of that disease without seeing. We are agreeing and choosing to believe that in that situation that I am in, God has already set me free from it. Hallelujah. Even if you are born from a family that has no background, you are choosing to believe that God is going to give you a background that he himself has created for you. And that is working out things for your good. 
Father, we thank you. Speak a word to God. We bless your name this morning, this afternoon. Lord, we have spoken many times about surrendering things of our lives to you, but we have failed many of those times to fully surrender these things to you. In our areas of lives, Lord, we have failed many times to surrender certain quarters of our lives to you. Because we have doubted that you are good. We have doubted your love. But today, Lord, we choose. Today, my Father, I choose to believe and to have faith that you are good, that you love me, that you are faithful, that you are a miracle-working God, that you have the best plans for my life. Including the best plans for this church. We thank you, King of Kings. We honor your name. If you are there in our midst and you have not believed in Jesus, because this thing I've spoken about, about saying, not my will, but your will, is only possible first if you believe in Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you will continue living by sight and making decisions by sight and end up in a very, very bad place. I call upon us today, I call upon you today to choose to believe this afternoon in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died for you, that he loves you. So if you're there and you want to believe and to give your life to Jesus, I want to give you a minute. Feel free to lift up your hand. Feel free to walk out here and we will pray with you. I give a minute. If you're there, you can lift up your hand. We pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Lord, teach me, teach us to not only pronounce the words that not my will, but thine will. But Lord, you are giving us the ability in the spirit to make daily choices and decisions based on your will, not our own. Father, is it searching the scriptures that we ought to search so that we know this will? May you take us there. May, you listen, may, may it be listening to the spirit when he speaks. Father, open our ears that we shall hear. Be it listening to brethren when they speak to us. Whichever way that you will use to make us know your will, Lord, use it to the glory of your name. I pray that you fortify our faith, Lord. I pray that we shall not live by sight, but by faith. To the glory and to the honor of your name. We bless you, we honor you. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the grace